Look at this thing. It's stunning. I keep staring at it because I'm still just in awe of how well it turned out and I cannot wait to play this game. But we've sure got a lot of work to do before we get to that point. Welcome back to Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie and this is part five of our Joust Restoration series. In this episode, we're gonna turn our attention to the electronics. The last couple of videos have been focused on the cabinet and recovering the original side art and restoring this beautiful control panel with the super rare optical two-way joysticks. But if we ever wanna play this game, obviously we've gotta get the electronics working properly too. So in this episode, we're gonna head out to the garage. We're going to recap that Wells Gardner K4900 monitor. We'll install a cap kit and do whatever else we need to do to get it working properly again. We'll also focus on the transformer assembly. It needs a couple of things too. Uh, it needs a new power cord for one and a couple of other things to get it working properly. And uh, yeah, hopefully by the end of this episode, we'll be able to connect those two things together, fire them up, and uh, hopefully nothing catches on fire, blows up, and we'll be one step closer to playing Joust. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in seeing, let's go! Overtime! The next thing that I want to do is uh, attack this monitor chassis. Um, I want to, you know, we've already washed it. I want to recap it. You know, this this monitor I did by working, right? When I saw it working, it, you know, it had the uh, the SNK Street Smart PCB in it, and it was running. So, you know, and I even like played a level, right? Uh, uh, so it was working. It was dim, et cetera, et cetera. So we we probably have some uh, some work to do. I've already cleaned this thing, so we're in good shape there. I want to take the chassis out, uh, get it out uh, onto the workbench, and uh, start by recapping it. I've got a cap kit, I've got a new cap, a uh, filter cap uh, from Arcade Parts and Repair, and that's, uh, you know, it looks like this has never been done, so that's always uh, the first step, sort of in, you know, monitor uh, maintenance for these 40 uh, year old monitors with capacitors from the early 1980s. So I've already disconnected most of this, which I did as part of the cleaning process. So um, the neck board has been disconnected from the, uh, the neck of the tube. Uh, the yoke wire has been disconnected. The degauss wire has been disconnected. Obviously the, uh, the anode cup is disconnected and we already discharged this, uh, I think a couple of times already, but I'll just come in here with my homemade discharging tool and make sure that uh, everything is uh, well discharged, and I think we're good there. Uh, let's see, any other wires we need to disconnect? Uh, power's already obviously disconnected because it's not in the cabinet. There's no video signal going into this thing. Um, let's see, some of these like uh, other, um, even just, you know, chassis to chassis connectors I disconnected just to help with the drying process. All right, so it looks like the one wire that's left connected is a grounding wire. So there's this grounding, uh, um, I don't know, strapper wire that, that you know, connects to the, the, the tube and it goes to the neck board here. And it looks like it was cut at some point and just twisted together. So I'm going to untwist that and uh, that looks uh, nice and safe. So we'll leave that like that for now. We will, I'll repair this, I'll solder it and put heat shrink tubing over it. But now I think in terms of connections, we are completely separate from the tube. So um, one of the things that's really nice about uh, K4900s is how easy it is to take the chassis in and out, right? So once you, you know, disconnect all of these connections, all you need to do is there's, um, if you can see it, there's uh, uh, a, uh, like a machine screw here and a machine screw here, just holding it in and that's it. So we remove these two screws. Oops, come on, thought it was loose. Here we go. And watch this, it'll come right out. Beautiful. Look how easy that is. There are so many other monitors that are just a huge pain in the butt to get the uh, the chassis in and out, but uh, the Wells Gardner K4900 is not one of them. Uh, I think we're in pretty good shape over here. I am seeing uh, a corner up here. I don't know if that's dust. 
or, or what. It could be a spot that I didn't clean well, or it could be a, a spot that got a little bit toasty. Uh, looking on the back, let's see if we get a clue from that. Um, maybe that part has seen a little bit of heat, but uh, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, this thing might have been worked on before, but it's certainly been a while because it was absolutely filthy. I'm looking and uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't think these caps have been replaced. So uh, yeah, I'll put this over onto the workbench. And uh, one little thing that I always do, because otherwise I'll lose them, is I put these screws right back in to the mounting point. You don't have to tighten them in all the way, but otherwise you'll be... You'll be looking for these forever if you don't, if you don't do this. Um, and a little silly thing, so there's a little piece of uh, cork right here and there should be one on the other side. That's the one thing that I think I lost uh, while cleaning this monitor was uh, that little piece of cork. So uh, we can put some cardboard or something under there just to prevent uh, jostling. But um, yeah, so let me get set up to do the cap kit and uh, we'll get started with that. Okay, we're ready to get started with the cap kit. Um, one of the things that's also really nice about working on the 4900 or 4900 monitors is that there are relatively few capacitors to replace. So, um, as always, I get all of my cap kits from arcadepartsandrepair.com. Uh, great stuff, great, great, um, great products, great prices, great product support. Peter is a, a pillar of the arcade restoration community. So we'll just pull our instruction sheet out of here and uh, take a look at what we got. See if there's any special instructions. I've done a 4900 before, but uh, all right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So there are actually a few different versions of the 4900. Usually you can tell based on um, um, the, there's different sort of numbers and types of uh, adjustment potentiometers, adjustment pots. Um, so I think this is the, a six pot 4900. Um, I've seen versions that have like a little a blue, um, blue pot on a little tiny uh, PCB for adjusting. I think the um, uh, vertical centering or something like that. Um, so yeah, there may be caps in here that the specific model doesn't need, but we've got all the parts that are included. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, all the sort of normal uh, instructions for a cap kit. Make sure you are observing polarity, um, you know, putting the correct um, capacitance value measured in microfarads into the right spot, you know, taking a look at what's coming out as you're putting new ones in. Um, and, you know, the replacement, uh, the replacement caps might have a higher voltage rating, which is fine. That's just really for a safety margin. Um, but you do want to replace them with the correct or the same uh, microfarad rating, capacitance rating is what was in there originally, unless there's a note about, you know, some sort of uh, upgrade. Uh, there are a couple of notes here, three notes here, uh, D306, um, we're basically going to be installing a capacitor in the same hole as a diode, the same sort of vias in the PCB as a diode, a diode 306. Um, so we'll make sure we follow that. Uh, second note, there's many different versions of the K4900. Uh, there's one specific version that used a 3.3 microfarad 50 volt cap at C308. Uh, so if you have that, uh, then replace it what's in here. Otherwise, if your chassis has a 2.2 microfarad, you must replace it with the 2.2 microfarad cap provided. So I guess they provide two different versions of the, um, of the capacitor for C308. Uh, uh, okay, and um, uh, let's see, C366 uh, is not populated on every version, so if your chassis doesn't have it, 
uh, then don't install it. So I think we're, we're good to go here. Uh, I'm going to keep my sheet here and I can cross it out as we go. Um, so, you know, like I said, I've got uh, everything disconnected and uh, we can go ahead and get started. I'll just keep an eye on this corner over here. Again, I don't know if this is dirt or if it's uh, seen a little bit of heat, but I think we'll be in decent shape. So the first one we want, and we go one by one, and I'm not gonna show you every, you know, replacing every capacitor, because uh, you've seen me do cap kits before. Um, but the first one we're gonna want is a 1000 microfarad, 25 volt capacitor, which is probably one of the larger ones. And here we are right here. So uh, Peter from Arcade Parts and Repair uses high quality Nichicon, uh, high temperature, high uh, long life capacitors. So, uh, so yeah, 1000 microfarad, 25 volts, which is what we have. And uh, we want to install that at C201. So sometimes you can find it, you know, you gotta often look on both sides to find the pot that you're, or the capacitor that you're looking for. Let's see, C201. Uh, here's C202, C203, C204. So uh, the odds are it's probably in this area somewhere. C202, C5, R2, C201, right here, dead in the middle. So here's what I'm gonna do. We'll put a tiny bit of flux on. We're gonna add, uh, actually, I don't know if we really need to do that. This Sometimes you wanna add a little bit of solder, but I don't think we really need to do that here. Come in with our desoldering tool. Remove the old solder. You know, if a capacitor is particularly stubborn, we can add more solder and then uh, and then remove it. And uh, should just pop right out. And there we go. So this is a 1,000 microfarad, but a 16 volt uh, capacitor. So the one we're gonna be putting in is a 25 volt, so a higher voltage reading, and this one is rated for 85 degrees Celsius, whereas the replacement one from Arcade Parts and Repair is a 105 degree Celsius rating, so that should be good. All right, so we're gonna to wanna to observe polarity, and again, looking at the cap, uh, there's kind of multiple ways to know what the polarity is. To me, the most obvious one is there's a stripe uh, on the side with a, a minus symbol, you know, indicating where the negative lead is. And uh, typically the longer lead is the positive one. So we'll want to insert the capacitor into the correct spot like that. And it's silk screened on both sides, including with the polarity. So we'll come in like this and there's a, a plus symbol on the, uh, the top uh, side silk screen and then a dot on the negative side again, you know, line up the dot with the stripe. So we'll just put our capacitor in like that. Uh, I'm gonna hold it in place. You want the capacitor to be as flush to the board as possible. So I'll just bend this one over temporarily to hold it in place. We'll solder the other lead and then we'll bend it back. Don't really want to have it propped up on the anode wire. Let me see if I can find a little box or something to hold this up. All right, I've got a little box here that I'll prop up the chassis on just because I don't want to put a lot of pressure on the, uh, the anode wire. There we go. Uh, hopefully that's not creating any glare. Uh, this is just a box that I got a, uh, it was at an uh, inch and a quarter hole saw. I thought I was going to have to drill out those, um, or drill like uh, uh, to, um, you know, when I was fixing the, uh, the bonus holes or fixing the, the, the button holes on the, on the, uh, the joust control panel, uh, I was looking at a couple of different options to 
uh, fix the counterboard holes. I ended up using um, you know wood dowels, wood doweling to uh, to fix it. But uh, I thought about you know just drilling using a hole saw to create those uh, plugs. But and we're adding some new solder, and we're bending the other lead up, soldering this side. And uh, there we go. So basically, right, with your solder, you want to put a little bit of heat with the soldering iron on both the pad as well as the leg or the lead of the component. Uh, touch it with your solder, you know, give it, you know, maybe a second and a half or two seconds, pull the solder away, then pull the soldering iron away. And basically what you should want to see is like a little mini volcano or cone of, of solder. And, uh, I think we're good to go there. So I'm going to check that off the list. And every, every few uh, capacitors, what I like to do is stop, test, check continuity, make sure everything's good to go. Uh, and then I'll, I'll trim the leads and uh, uh, we'll be in, in good shape. So the next is C205, which is a 470 microfarad 35 volts. So let's find that. That's right there. So 470 microfarad, 35 volt. We'll just pull off this paper tape. That's how these you know, typically come in a strip uh, when you buy them in bulk and then Peter cuts them up and bags them separately. You know, there are a couple other places to get cap kits and you can always just buy capacitors directly from like, well, not from the manufacturer, but from Mauser or DigiKey or large distributors. Uh, but I really like the convenience of getting them from uh, a great shop like Arcade Parts and Repair because I know I'm getting good stuff and I know it's accurate and it's been tried and tested both by Peter and all of his customers. So C205 should be in roughly the same area. C202, C203, C204. And there's D205. And also while you're you know, working on this, you're gonna look for you know, cold solder joints, cracked solder joints, anything that looks a little bit uh, suspicious. This one you might wanna to touch up. Um, yeah, let's find uh, C205. And not necessarily every capacitor is gonna be replaced. Typically you want to be replacing the electrolytic capacitors. The electrolytic capacitors are typically the ones that go bad, dry out. You don't really need to worry about the, um, you know, smaller ceramic ones or, or whatever they are, metal film, et cetera. So let's find C205. C205 is right here. So again, coming in, a little bit of flux. My handy dandy flux pen come in with our desoldering gun. Where were we? Right there. All right, that's nice and free. We will tilt it back over and pull that out. And that is a uh, 470 microfarad 16 volt. And we're replacing that with 470 35. So again, slightly higher rating. Uh, we're observing polarity. The negative side goes to the dot and the positive, the longer lead goes to the uh, where it's, you know, screen printed as positive. And again, sort of looking at it on this side, shorter negative lead goes to the negative symbol, longer positive lead goes to the plus symbol. Put that there. Well, solder these leads in place. Okay. I know some folks don't like bending the leads uh, because it can make them difficult to take back out uh, if you ever need to do another cap kit, you know, 10 years or so in the future, but um, That's future Charlie's problem. And I'm not leaving them bent over, right? I'm straightening them out before I actually solder them. 
All right, those look pretty good. Maybe I want a tiny bit more solder on the first leg. Okay. That looks good. Okay. Check that one off the list. Next is C301. 330 microfarad, 50 volts. So another larger one. Might be this one. You can't always tell by the size. Yeah, see, that one's not. Um, 47... Yeah, typically the larger values are gonna have, especially voltage, are gonna have are gonna be larger caps, so that's not always the case. What are we looking for? 330 and 50 volts. There it is. Yeah, so this one's actually pretty small. So 330 microfarad, 50 volt. And we're looking for C301. I see Q301, R301. Looking for C, that's C315. Sometimes you'll flip back and forth until you find the, the cap that you're trying to hunt down. C301 all the way up here. All right. So, a bit of flux. Come in and desolder it. You see, this is an example where these look like they've been bent out a little bit. So we will uh, right there. We'll see what we can do to remove this. There we go. Is that this one? Sometimes these are like pulling loose teeth out. They want to hang on by a thread. All right, so that's uh, 330 microfarad, 25 volt. And this is 330 microfarad, 50 volt. So we will insert this one here. Again, observing polarity. Push that in. Yeah. All right, holding it flush to the top of the PCB. All right. Hmm. We'll do a two-step thing. This one wants to slip out, so we'll just tack this quickly with solder just to hold it firmly and then I'll straighten this leg out we'll solder that one in place properly okay and then we can remove the temporary solder tack from this side Straighten this leg back up. Be careful not to, <laughs> not to lift the trace. Right. That's that one right there. Coming in and solder it once and for all. And if you see me sort of sweeping up the leg, uh, that's just making sure there's no extra solder sort of connected higher up just to, I don't know, clean it a little bit. That looks pretty good. And again, we have our longer leg on the positive and the shorter leg on the negative, which is what we want. So those three are good to go. Uh, let's do a couple more before we uh, test continuity, et cetera.
And now we have our first uh, capacitor with a note on it. And this is the last one I'll do for now. Sorry about the noise. It's super windy outside, it's starting to snow a little bit and leaves are blowing around up against the garage door. So C308 has a note that says there's many different versions. Some used a 3.3. Uh, so if you have a 3.3 microfarad at C08, then replace it with a 308. Otherwise, uh, use the 2.2. Um, so let me pull out both of those. So it's nice of Peter to include both versions. So I've got a 2.2 microfarad 50 volt and a 3.3 microfarad 50 volt. So now let's find C308 on the board. You know, sometimes it's easier just to look for a capacitor. I see it. It's all the way down the opposite end in the corner. All right. Uh, where was I? Over here somewhere. C308, right here. Okay. Flux. The soldering gun. That fell right out. This little orange sucker. And this is a 2.2 microfarad 50 volt. It's a Nichicon, so higher quality, but only 85 degrees. So 2.2 is what we had. So following the note says, uh, so there's only one specific version that had a 3.3 microfarad. So uh, if your chassis has a 2.2 cap at C308, you must replace it with the 2.2 cap in the kit. Uh, okay, so we will put the 3.3 back into the bag, and I guess there's a issue where if, if after doing that you have a fold over, then you can try the 3.3, but we'll stick with the original value of 2.2, so the original was 2.2 microfarad 50 volt, and this is 2.2 microfarad 50 volt at C308, and we will observe polarity. Come in here by this heat sink. All right. Get that as close to flush as possible. All right. Solder that sucker in place. And then we'll take a break, we'll test them all, and then I'll jump ahead uh, and do the rest of the cap kit. Okay, straighten this one out. All right, that looks good. Looks like we've got the correct polarity. C308, whoops. All right, so uh, at this point, let me grab my side cutters, micro cutters, whatever you want to call them, and um, we'll do a couple things. So we'll flip it over and check out the top side of the board. Here we go. And we'll come in and check the polarity again, right? Because the last thing you want is to have a cap in backwards. So starting with C301, which is right there, I see the dot, I see the negative stripe lined up to it, so I'm going to mark the top of the Sharpie, and I will again check it off the list. So that one's good to go. C. Actually, that was C301. Ah, so we're still looking for C201. We can find it. It helps to look at the ones that you've already plugged in. So there's C201. 
C201 has the correct polarity, so it has been inserted correctly, so that's good. C205, C205 is right here, and can't, yep, C205 has the correct polarity, so those three are good. C303 is, C303 is right here. C303 has the correct polarity. This is a little guy, so we'll come in, try not to draw on <laughs> this bundle of wires. So that's good. And C308 is the one we just did, right? Yeah, C308 is right there, and that has the correct polarity. All right, so we've got five down, uh, maybe 15 or 20 to go. So let me go and knock these out. Uh, I'll pop back for the ones that have notes associated with them just to show you what I did and if anything interesting pops up. Uh, but otherwise, I will see you momentarily. And of course, two, <laughs> two more quick things before I forget. Uh, I wanna test continuity uh, with our solder joints and then cut the excess uh, leads off. So we've got our multimeter on continuity beep. We'll come in here. That one's good. That one's good. And we'll test a couple of points, yep, on each one. So that one's good. Uh, let's see this one here. That looks good. Okay. All right, and I also test them uh, to each other uh, to make sure that the legs aren't shorted. Often you'll get a very brief uh, connection um, so those three are good. Come over here. That looks good. That looks good. One, two, three, four, five. So that's good to go. And we'll just come in with our side cutters and carefully remove the excess length of the legs. Now you want to cut it, you know, you don't, obviously you don't want to leave it super long because uh, on some some uh, chassis, there's a metal plate underneath it, and you don't want to short the uh, leg to the metal plate, but we've got wood on this chassis, or this monitor, so that's not a problem. But you also want to make sure you don't cut it too low and cut into the sort of volcano of solder. So you want to cut you know, just above where the solder ends, like that, because you don't want to compromise the solder joint at all. So leave a you know, millimeter or two of leg above that sort of cone of solder. And when you're done, it should look like a little volcano with uh, <laughs> tiny legs sticking out the top. So that's good. And uh, yeah, let me go do the rest of these caps and then I'll, I'll come back in a second. Okay, I'm gonna try to get in here real close and see if you can see this. So the note in the cap kit for C366 says, this capacitor is not populated on every version of the chassis. So uh, if your chassis doesn't have it, if it isn't populated, then don't uh, add it. So if you can see here is C, 303, this one right here, which I've already replaced. And above it, you can see in the, the screen printing is C366, uh, but instead there is a diode in there, which I believe is D307 maybe. So uh, yeah, so this chassis, this, this 4900 doesn't have a capacitor at C366, so we will not be adding one. 
Okay, another interesting thing I ran into actually on the next cap, uh, in the cap kit, is uh, C506 and the, uh, the instruction sheet from Arcade Parts and Repair says this should be a 22 microfarad, 250 volt cap, which is what I've got uh, in the kit for C506. Uh, but when I pulled the original off the board, uh, it's actually 22 microfarad, 315 volts which I thought was interesting, because uh, that's a higher voltage rating that than what's on the sheet and what's on the, uh, the cap that I'm going to install. Uh, so I double checked the original um, manual uh, from Wells Gardner for the 4900, and sure enough, uh, the manual lists that capacitor as a 250 volt, exactly like Peter's uh, instructions in the cap that I've got here. So that's fine. I've seen a couple of things that make me think that Perhaps this uh, chassis was recapped a long time ago. Uh, these caps do look a bit old, but I'm seeing some things that suggest to me that uh, it has been worked on. So that's fine. So I'm just gonna go and install uh, the new 250 volt capacitor um, like I got in the kit. All right, we finished all of the caps in the cap kit, except for the last one, which is a bit of an oddball. Again, like I mentioned earlier, at D306, there should be a capacitor kind of uh, uh, piggybacking with a diode uh, in that connection. And we can see it right here. Uh, I see D306, here's this lone one, it's a one uh, microfarad capacitor sitting kind of on top of a, uh, a diode. Um, looking at it the way it is, facing the board with the, you know, the, the screen printing in the correct orientation, negative is to the right. Uh, and just like it says in the instructions, uh, the negative lead should be closest to uh, test point 81, which is right here. So that's good. So let's flip this over and desolder that capacitor, we might have to take the, we might have to take the diode out uh, in order to do this. So there's D306 right there, and I can kind of see two leads poking out of that spot. So let's go ahead and do this, a little bit of flux, come in with our the soldering gun. And uh, one of the components is in there sort of, the lead's really bent in hard and I'm hoping that's the diode. So the capacitor will just slip right out if we can be that lucky. So let's come in here and, yep, all right, we were able to pull out the capacitor without removing the diode. Okay, so D306, and that is a one microfarad 50 volt is the old one. And our new one is one microfarad 50 volt. I've sort of pre-bent the legs a little bit just to make it easier to insert this thing. Because the, uh, the holes here, or the vias, are a bit wider than typical, especially for a capacitor of this size. So we'll poke that right in there. And we will bend our leads just to kind of hold it in place. Okay. Now we can flip back over. Right. Let's see. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Let me go ahead and lift this one up. Solder it in place. That looks pretty good. Pull the other leg up. Solder it in place. All right, we will check that one off the list. 
And let's come in here with our multimeter to test continuity. And this one should go here. And it does. I think that's the only place it goes. And this one goes here. All right. We are good. Okay. And we will triple check our polarity. So negative should be pointing to the right to test point 81, and it is. So let's come in with our Sharpie and mark that one as being correct. We'll scratch it off the list once and for all. And once we snip the excess leads off, the cap kit will be complete. All right, and again, we do it just above the solder cone. So that's how you do a cap kit. Uh, that was the K4900 cap kit from, again, arcadepartsandrepair.com. Uh, we've got two extra caps uh, still in this little baggie, uh, which is expected because one, for one of these extra caps, we had uh, an alternate value, right? So there's different versions of the K4900, and Peter gave us uh, caps for the two different kinds. And for one of them was uh, only, you know, populate this cap if it's already populated on your chassis, and it was not on ours. So uh, one more thing I want to do to the chassis itself is replace the filter cap, which is the large capacitor over here. And generally, filter caps are not included in cap kits. Uh, they don't always go bad. I don't, I don't really know the reason why they're not included. Um, but I do have a replacement cap kit, or excuse me, I do have a replacement filter cap from uh, Arcade Parts and Repair. Uh, and essentially what the filter cap does, I think, is just filter the uh, uh, condition, kind of the, the voltage. So uh, we'll go and do that. So to take uh, this um, uh, filter cap off, which is C505, there's actually four different leads. Um, so we're going to clear off all this old solder, and to make things easier, we're going to add some solder. The sucker wants to fall right out, and there we go. Big old cap, and this is a 200-volt 200, 200 uh, 560 microfarad, so 560 microfarad, 200-volt filter cap. Uh, and you see these big fat leads right here. Uh, and here's our new filter cap, smaller form factor, it's more modern, 560 volt, to, or 560 microfarad, 200 volt, so the exact same value as the original, and uh, negative should go that way. Uh, let's see. And let's figure out the best, the best way to click this thing into place. All right. What in the heck? Hold on a second here. Interesting. So uh, the leads on this new filter cap, you can see that right there, are uh, narrower than even the narrowest points to mount this sucker. So this has to go here. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Let me do uh, a minute or two of research and figure out what we should do. Okay, I figured this out now and uh, I actually remember this from doing the same thing on the Oh, on the uh, 4900 on the Robotron years ago. So uh, I looked it up and, and Peter from arcadepartsandrepair.com actually has a really helpful video uh, on his uh, YouTube page linked to from his uh, store website uh, on exactly how to do this. And basically the, the issue is, is that 
Modern capacitors have a 10 millimeter sort of lead spacing, uh, which is smaller than the, uh, the older ones. And uh, the older ones, you know, that's sort of what the chassis was designed for. Uh, but we can fix this. So basically what we're going to do is uh, the, the negative side has to go to this ground plane and the positive side has to go to this, uh, this pad here. And there are these two other um, pads on, on opposite sides, but these are really just designed for stability to uh, help hold the, the capacitor because it's so large, hold, hold it in place. And they're not actually connected to anything. So if you look, these, um, these pads are like isolated. They're not connected to any other circuits. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to install the positive lead into uh, this hole and the negative lead into this hole. And then we're going to bridge this lead back to where uh, the negative uh, uh, side is supposed to be. And I've made this handy dandy little jumper, sort of very similar to what Peter did on his uh, video. I actually <laughs> used a piece of uh, copper wire from uh, some Romex uh, cable, like household electrical, you know, like you would have in your wall, um, put a little heat shrink tubing on it. And basically it'll sit here and this side will be soldered uh, to the negative lead coming through this hole. And then we will solder the other side to this pad over here and thus completing the circuit uh, where we want it to be. So I can come in here with my capacitor and again, negative side is going to go to this whole positive side here and then we'll jumper uh, it appropriately. So let me see if I can get this lined up. All right, that looks pretty good. So we'll come in here and solder this first side. Okay. This part is also known as the uh, B plus filter cap and I'm just gonna solder over here just to cover up these pads for, I guess, aesthetic purposes or who knows. Uh, and then we'll attach our jumper. And it's going to be connected right to the, let's push that on nice and snug. We're going to want it to lay flat on the pads on the other side. And we want it to really be nice and well connected to the capacitor, the, fil the new filter cap leg on this side. So that looks, looks pretty good. Okay. Let's come in here. Ooh, that got a little hot. <laughs> okay, but I think we're in good shape. We're in the position we want. And actually, I'll, I'll solder it on over here. That's good healthy amount of solder. We want to make sure we've got a good connection because this handles, like I said, this filters, it's the B plus voltage, which is the high voltage that is produced by the monitor for the picture. All right, I think that's pretty good. We can come back in here and finish, finish the joint over here. looks pretty good. So let's come in with our multimeter. Continuity beep. So this, that's connected, that's connected, that's good. That's connected and all right, and this should actually go to ground. And it is. So I think we're good to go with the filter cap. So this chassis, hopefully, should be good to go. We replaced all the caps, we replaced the filter cap. Uh, I think we're good, so why don't we um, get the 
tripod setup to move, uh, to reconnect the uh, chassis to the monitor. All right, and now we're ready to reinstall the chassis into the monitor. Uh, if you remember, we lost a small piece of cork on this side, corresponding to this side, so I just put a piece of uh, cardboard in there that I got from a, uh, I think it was a Eggo waffle <laughs> box. So, all right, just make sure none of these wires are tangled. And, uh, oh, before I do anything, let me remove those screws that we remembered to reinsert here for safekeeping. Put that right there. And this one over here. Okay, now we can slide the chassis back in. All right, that looks lined up good there. Start the screw. All right, see how we're doing on this side. All right. Get our screw back in. All right, tighten it up again on this side. All right, okay, and now we can start uh, remaking our connections here. So uh, we'll leave the anode cup for the end. Uh, let's see what to do first. Um, okay, uh, we have this wire here goes to the neck board, a little tiny little connector, okay. This is the uh, this goes over here. Like this. It's labeled connector I, the letter I. All right, I think that's everything for the neck board. We can take some of this old silicon off carefully. Uh, you know, a lot of these came from the factory with a bit of silicon, like caulking almost, or hot glue to kind of hold the neck board in place so that it didn't shimmy off during shipping. All right, neck board is back on securely. All right. Um, we have our degauss circuit connection. All right, that's on nice and tight. We have the, uh, this is the yoke connector. Let me take the neck board off so I don't accidentally bang it and crack it. Sorry if I'm talking really quietly. <laughs> I always feel like I need to be extra delicate with this stuff for obvious reasons. All right, I think that's good. Uh, so what's left? Uh, power, that connection. That one's fine. We'll do the anode cup last. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, you know what I want to do is fix this ground uh, strap. So um, I guess technically I could probably just do it with a uh, a wire nut, but uh, I grabbed some um, quick connects from Ace Hardware. These are. Uh, bullet style, so older style. So this is like uh, somewhat similar to, you know, connectors on a wiring harness or whatever. There's a male and a female side and a, of the bullet and the male side goes 
into the female side, sliding our connector on. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Can you? Yeah, kinda. Sliding our connector on. Grabbing our old school crimper and we'll crimp it down. Sorry about that wind. Ooh, it's howling out there. All right. That seems nice and snug. And then here we go. The corresponding connector on the other side. There we go. I think we're nice and secure in there. Let's keep bumping my finger. All right. Crimp that down, we'll do it twice. All right, I think that's nice and secure. So, uh, let's see. We can, I think we made all our connections. We can come back. All right, neck board is on nice and secure. And then we can make this quick connect connection. All right, and uh, let's even double check that with our multimeter continuity test just to be extra sure that we have continuity with ground between those two ends. So I'll come in here, touch it over here. And that's a good solid connection. So that's all set. So I think this monitor is uh, basically ready to be tested. We can reconnect the anode cup. We'll do that real quick. And even though this monitor has been off and already discharged, my OCD tells me to just come in and make sure we are fully discharged. And we are. So we'll take our anode cup. And basically it's got these little rabbit ears that we need to get into the anode hole right here in the tube. So let's find a good spot for this to go. And yeah, we are reconnected. Uh-oh, no we're not. Ha-ha, <laughs> okay. You gonna play games with me, are you? All right, that's why it's important to test because you don't want that anode falling off in the game. All right, we're in there nice and secure. All right, and this is not a suction cup, right? It's those two little like rabbit ear teeth are kind of holding it in that hole. So uh, yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, so that monitor is ready to be tested, fully squared away, ready to go. All right, there's a few things I wanna do here to this transformer assembly. If you remember in the previous video, I got this off of eBay. Uh, I believe it is the correct type for a Robotron or a Joust, so it should work great in my Joust. Uh, in the previous video, in sort of a sped up montage at the beginning, I cleaned this. So I took it all apart, cleaned it by hand, put it back together. And one of the things I did was remove the original power cord, which I still have right here. So Williams did something kind of strange. Um, they used, you know, uh, <laughs> this power cord reminds me of something that you would find on like a household lamp, right? So three wires, flat, brown. And uh, yeah, this is, this is what Williams used on this era of uh, arcade machines. This is what was on my Robotron. Uh, this is what we're, you know, we, we would expect to see on a Joust. Um, and that's fine, right? It does the job. And this is not in, you know, that bad of shape, uh, but we're going to replace it. And what I use and what I used on that Robotron before is you can get this from Home Depot. Uh, it's just an extension cord, um, but it's a, you know, sort of the same kind of setup, uh, you know, three cable, three wire, flat, brown, and uh, this is in perfect brand new condition. So this is what we're going to use. We're going to install this 
onto the transformer assembly and use this as the power cord for the machine. I'll feel a lot safer having this in the house because it's brand new, you know, no nicks, no, you know, no strain, no issues with it whatsoever. Uh, and so we're gonna have to, you know, solder this on and, and feed it through. And basically the way this worked was, so uh, the power cord comes through, goes to this wire holder. Um, the hot side uh, of the, um, or the, you know, the, the, the hot line on the power cable, power cord, goes to the fuse uh, and then to the service switch, uh, which you can, you know, if you're doing work on the cabinet, you can plug a light into here, you can plug a soldering iron into here. This is not what you plug the monitor into, never, never. This is just regular sort of a, think of it like an extension uh, a plug coming from the, the power from the wall. Um, and then the uh, hot goes through the um, through the fuse and into this line filter, and then the uh, the neutral and the ground go into the line filter, and then on into the uh, the transformer, which creates a different uh, different voltages uh, that AC voltages that we need. So I need to fish the new wire through the new power cord through. I'm going to try to sort of replicate the same kind of uh, uh, knot going in here, and then I need to. Um, solder it to the board. So, uh, yeah, I want to take all of these like, you know, warning labels off. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to pull this out of the way. We'll put this twist tie back on just to make it a little bit, a little less unwieldy. So we'll put this here just as sort of a, a guide. And that's kind of the orientation I want. So I've got some length here um, of the power cord, and I've got my wire strippers that do also have, has a sort of wire cutter here. And I'm just gonna come in here and cut off the extension cord part, right? So we don't need these plugs, that's useless. All we need is this one wire. All right, so I've got it started and I just want to start separating these wires using my superhuman strength. And uh, we can kind of just follow the original one to get a sense of how much length we need to work with. Just a touch more, okay. And then uh, we'll pull out the neutral. And so we're gonna come in like here again, and I wanna recreate this sort of knot so uh, I guess we'd come in like so. Yeah, you know, this is almost meaningless, right? The way this, the way this knot goes, but um, this is the most natural way that it wants to come. And this knot's here just obviously to prevent the line from being um, tugged out. <laughs> All right, I think I've got a knot now that uh, roughly approximates, you know, what you would have seen originally. Uh, and so I've got the, uh, the hot wire or the smooth wire going to the fuse block and I've got the neutral or striped or ribbed wire and the neutral and the uh, ground going to the line filter. Um, so now I need to solder this in. kind of okay, I think. Uh, ba, 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 ba. And we can test that real quick with our multimeter. Set on continuity beep. There we go. So I've got one end connected to the uh, hot or live line on the, the plug itself. The other side obviously on the fuse block and we're good there. And uh, yeah, so that's fine. We'll pop this fuse back in. This is the original fuse, but it's still good. Okay, so that's the live wire. And now we've got another sort of uh, tricky situation here. Uh, lots of wires in the way. Basically, let me come in and show you. 
basically what I need to do is uh, take the ground or green wire from the, the new power cord and attach it to the middle sort of lug of this line filter and then take the neutral line and connect that to uh, this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and then I'll come right back and uh, show you what we got. Okay, I think I've got everything sorted out now. Uh, the neutral connection was a pain in the butt as well. I had to take the, uh, the line filter up off the board and finagle with it, but I think, I think we're good. Got some solid connections. I tested everything with the uh, continuity beep on the multimeter and uh, I think we're good to go. So I think we are ready to test this transformer assembly and make sure we're getting the correct voltages uh, off of it. The first thing I'm gonna do is just sort of a really basic uh, test. We're gonna plug it in and uh, we're gonna use a, uh, a circuit uh, or an outlet circuit tester to make sure that everything is wired properly in the, uh, the service switch. What's interesting is whenever the, uh, the power cord is plugged in at all, this service switch is always live, right? It's tied directly into the, the, the line coming in. And so there's really no, there's no way to turn that off. So that's uh, something to keep in mind if you ever plug anything into it. Uh, just because you turn the game off, uh, this service outlet is still on. Um, but nothing else will really be on, right? So there will be power going through the fuse and through the line filter and out into this first, uh, I think it's a 12 pin Molex connector. And this goes out to the, uh, the safety interlock switch and uh, the, uh, the actual power switch. So the, the transformer itself won't be live. So we'll just be testing the, uh, the service outlet to start. So I'm gonna turn off uh, my workbench power cord. I'm gonna come in and plug in our new our new power cord, courtesy of Home Depot. I will turn on the workbench. Nothing smoking, nothing blowing up. And we'll plug in our circuit tester. And we have uh, two yellow lights and the label tells me that means it's correct. So can you even see that on it? These, uh, these two yellow lights are correct, or are on, which means it's correct. We can pull that out. Uh, and if you've never seen one of these before, it's a really basic thing. Just if you ever do an electrical work, it'll tell you if you've wired an outlet wrong. Uh, so basically, as long as you see those two yellow lights on, that means it's wired correctly. So uh, let's unplug and turn our light back on. Yeah, the next thing we can do actually is we have to solve the problem of, you know, how do we, how do we uh, turn the power switch on and close the, uh, uh, the safety interlock uh, with this Molex connector disconnected. Now, what's interesting and, and sort of fortunate is I had a kind of a hacked up version of that uh, part of the, uh, the, the power harness that came with this uh, isolation transformer or this uh, transformer assembly. Uh, so we've got the, the other side of the, uh, the Molex connector and a couple of wires here. So if, uh, I've looked at the, uh, the um, power schematic and I have sort of a, a, a a zoomed out version. Basically, I think it's uh, these two wires, the, the white and red and white and um, um, blue go to the, is it the safety interlock? Yeah, and then the um, black and yellow, or the, the, white and, uh, the white and red goes to the safety interlock, and then it goes to the, the actual power uh, uh, switch for the game, and then it goes to this white and blue and comes back into the, uh, the Molex connector and I've uh, connected them sort of semi-permanently with uh, a wire nut. And then uh, the black and yellow go to the other uh, interlock switch uh, in the cabinet. I think there's one in the back and one in the coin door, right? Uh, so again, I semi-permanently connected them with uh, wire nuts sort of simulating those both of those switches being closed. And uh, these black and white ones uh, go to the marquee light. This is power from the marquee light. I didn't, I don't, I, it's probably wouldn't hurt to close them, but I just sort of have them capped off individually with smaller wire nuts. And then this is supposed to be the, uh, the power for the monitor. And you can see that they've, uh, uh, they cut it and crimped on uh, a different connector. So this isn't the one at least that my, or the K4900 uh, here uh, expects. So we'll figure that out, but we'll leave that disconnected for now. So basically by plugging this in, uh, I will be simulating uh, both of the safety interlock switches 
uh, it's a tight fit, uh, being closed. Uh, as well as the power switch uh, being on. So I need to be careful because we will be sending voltages here. Um, so we'll just put that off to the side. So again, I'm going to turn off the workbench power strip. I'm going to plug, plug us in. And uh, by turning it back on, we now have power going through the, uh, the transformer. So I'm going to put my multimeter on AC volts, just untangle this real quick. AC volts, and we will stick our probes into the power for the monitor. And we get well, 130 volts. Uh, I'll have to double check, that might be a little bit high, but uh, that should be, that's probably gonna be okay. But yeah, I'll do, I'll do some double checking and make sure that that is the case. Okay, one more thing that I'm gonna need to do, or that I want to do, is kind of fix the, ah, uh, do I wanna, uh, what I'm thinking about doing is um, uh, fixing the connector on our wiring harness. So basically, uh, if you recall, I was showing you how you know, it looks like on this fragment of the wiring harness, this is the part that goes to the monitor. They crimped on like a different uh, connector. And uh, I was thinking I could crimp on, fix this and put on a good uh, connector because I do have one. Uh, let me think about this for a second. Yeah, I think we should do that. Uh, those things are cheap, so. Let me get set up to do that and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, one thing I wanna check and I'm not 100% sure that this matters, uh, but you know, there isn't, I, I don't know what the polarity is supposed to be. I don't know if polarity really matters for the monitor AC. These wires are the same color. They're both, you know, violet and yellow. Um, and I just wanna make sure that, you know, I'm, I've got it hooked up the right way. Uh, and the monitor does on its uh, power cord, which you can't see, it does seem to have you know, indications of, of polarity, right? There's a smooth side and a ribbed and striped uh, side. So I wanna figure out which of these connections is the hotline uh, essentially. So I've got it hooked up to the, the isolation or to the transformer assembly. We're gonna turn it on and then we're gonna see which line has voltage between it and ground. And I think we can do that with our multimeter, and I believe that's uh, how uh, we'll be able to test this. So let me actually grab a clip, put that on the black one, and we'll come over here and clip this to ground on the secondary side of the of the wiring harness or of the uh, of the transformer. And uh, we'll turn this on, and then we'll see which of these has uh, voltage. Um, get a nice solid connection here. Okay, here it goes. We're energized. And uh, let's see. That one has 130, or just shy 130. And this one has only 48. So I believe that means this one is the, the hot side. So yeah, up to 130 now. So we can turn that off. We can disconnect it from power. Turn our light back on. And I've got a little piece of electrical tape that I will use to remind us which side is the live wire or the hot wire. All right, and that means this one is neutral. Okay, so let's go over uh, to the other side and uh, solder this up. All right, so basically for testing, I want to put on uh, a connector that will actually match and fit um, the power input wire on the, on the monitor. Uh, the one that's connected here uh, will not. So we'll go ahead and start by just cutting these off. So we're not going to need this anymore. All right. 
and we're remembering which one is our hot and which one is our neutral. I've marked the hot one with some electrical tape. Uh, and so fortunately I already have one of these connectors. I bought it before. So this is a, a Molex 0.093 two pin male uh, connector uh, from Arcade Parts and Repair. Uh, one of the things that I usually do is buy extra. If I'm buying something and it's cheap, I just buy two or more of them. And I think this is like a buck maybe, maybe less. Uh, and we've got some pins here. So we will, and I need female pins because on the, on the female connector, it has male pins. So the male connector gets female pins. Oh, and look at that. Very conveniently, I've got two left over right there. Okay, put this to the side. We will find our side cutters They're right there. Cut these. Ooh. Put that anywhere. All right. Trim that up just a little bit. All right, so you've seen me do this before. Uh, we need a wire stripper to strip off some wire here. That's probably plenty. We'll twist it up a little bit. And we've got our ratcheting crimp tool that we will line the pin into. Okay. We will send the wire through. Come on. And we'll crimp down. All right, that looks like a good crimp to me. If we really wanted to, we could um, solder this, but this is not a permanent connection, so that goes in like that. And we'll do the same over here, strip this. That's probably plenty, actually. Uh, trim the crap off of this one. All right. Line it up in our ratcheting crimper. Okay. Feed our wire through. Crimp down. Think we're good to go there. Feed that sucker through. And uh, we should be good to go. Let me just double check this. Just double check this on the monitor. Look at that beautiful connection. So uh, I think we're ready to uh, test this monitor. So let's, uh, let's get everything connected with the test pattern generator and see if we get an image on the screen. Okay, I think we are all hooked up and ready to go, or at least I hope we are. So I've got the, uh, that part of the harness plugged into the transformer assembly. I have uh, the power plugged into the monitor from the, uh, from the harness coming off of the isolation transformer. I have my test pattern generator uh, connected to the video input uh, signals. I've run a, uh, a wire with alligator clips to connect the monitor chassis to ground. Uh, I believe that is uh, necessary and important. And uh, I think we're ready to go. So um, cross your fingers, cross your toes. Hope nothing goes wrong. So we're turning off power at the bench. We are plugging in the transformer, making sure we're not inadvertently touching anything. I think we're okay like that. All right, turning on the test pattern generator and we'll turn back on the power and hopefully nothing fries. I hear high voltage from the monitor. 
Hi. Sounds pretty good. Do we have any kind of image on the screen? All right, look at that. That's a little night light. I'm gonna disconnect. Actually, I can turn off a switch here. Turn that strip off. Look at that. That's really not bad at all. We're gonna have to make some adjustments. I see a, I don't know if it's me, we have a tiny bit of flickering, shakiness, but uh, turn this light off here. How does that look on the camera? Not bad at all, I'd say. Yeah, I don't know if my eyes are playing tricks on me or what. Now I can't see where the light is. But uh, I'm gonna put my head in the way for a second. I don't know if there's a tiny bit of flickering or what is going on. Look at those colors. Yeah, you, this, this is not, there we go. It's not doing it any justice on camera. Let's see if I can make it a little bit better. Those colors look amazing. Great separation. I'm not even gonna to touch the color adjustments, frankly. We got great grayscale. You know, you can't quite see it uh, in the camera. Uh, you know, the, the camera struggles to adapt to a um, CRT, but uh, yeah, so great color separation in the grayscale. That black is nice and black. Uh, we need to make some adjustments, I think, position-wise. But uh, all in all, I'm very happy with how this monitor is looking. It's looking a million times better than it did, and I know I didn't show it to you uh, when we when I first bought this thing and picked it up. Let's cycle through some of these. Yeah, look at that. Not bad at all. Okay. We turn on the house lights, or the garage lights, as it were. And uh, I want to make, let's see, I want to move the horizontal center over. So, let me turn it off real quick. And I want to shift it. Let's see, I want to shift it to the right, don't I? Yeah. So, let's turn it off. And we'll move this jumper wire, carefully remove it, and we will reposition it over to the right, see if that helps. I just want to do a quick test tonight. I'm not going to go through all of the adjustments. We'll do that later. Give that a second to warm back up. Uh, I don't think that helped. We're still, can't quite see from this angle. Uh, we're still off to the left a bit. Maybe these things are backwards. Try it again. Try it all the way the other way. Or maybe this uh, jumper is just not making good connection. It feels like it's coming on and off too easily. Let's try it all the way on that connector. And I think I can move those jumpers while the monitor's on, but I don't know, call me a wimp. Yeah, that's, uh, that's worse. So let's move that back to the far right one, which is here. And maybe we'll have to mod this and put a potentiometer here instead of this jumper wire. But, uh, I don't know, maybe the horizontal shift will help. Let's let that come back on. Yeah, all in all, this looks, this monitor looks fantastic. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. That's beautiful. Uh, we might want to adjust the horizontal width at some point. Um, but, uh, yeah, that looks, 
and that's it pegged all the way to the to that side yeah maybe we'll need to adjust the horizontal width and wow that's like directly under the the neck let me see if I've got good tool to reach that nope oh you know what before I mess with any of that I should do the B plus but uh, I think we'll do that in a, a future video we'll do a quick one on dialing in a 4900 but uh, yeah let's just cycle through these one more time those colors look great Yeah, beautiful. So uh, I think this, uh, this episode was certainly shorter than the, uh, the previous one, but let's kind of uh, cover what we did. Uh, so in a previous video, we washed the monitor and then we left it out to dry, I think for like 10 days almost. Uh, we washed the uh, transformer assembly. We actually took that apart, washed it, put it back together. Uh, and then we tested it out at the beginning of this episode, making sure that the voltages seemed right. And you know, that 130 AC going to the monitor is a little bit high, but uh, you know, sounds like, I think uh, Mecca was saying on the cloud forums that that's pretty normal, even with, with Williams and I think some midway uh, transformers, you know, with the slightly higher voltages you get from household uh, electricity, household power these days, uh, the transformers are typically gonna put 130 uh, up to 130 out on the uh, the isolation transformer secondary windings going to the monitor so that's not bad see so yeah, everything else on the, the transformer assembly looked pretty good uh, and then what did we do to the monitor well we recapped it uh, this is a Wells Gardner K4900 monitor uh, we installed a new cap kit from arcadepartsandrepair.com that went pretty smoothly we pointed out a couple of things that are you know things to watch for uh, for the 4900 cap kit. Uh, we did all that. We uh, installed a new filter cap. Uh, that went fine. And uh, what else did we do? We uh, installed a new uh, connector on this sort of fragment of a wiring harness from before. Uh, we fixed the cut grounding wire between the neck board and the monitor uh, uh, sort of grounding strap uh, to the neck board. And uh, then we connected everything using a test pattern generator to uh, test the monitor output. And I think we are in uh, pretty good shape here. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of adjustments we need to make. We'll dial in the B plus. Uh, we'll make any other, you know, geometry and color adjustments that we might need to make. But uh, I think we'll save that for a future episode because it's Saturday night. Uh, it's getting late. Um, and uh, I want to wrap this up. I got some cleaning up to do in the garage before I get to bed. Um, and then I'll, I'll edit this tomorrow and hopefully get this out, you know, sometime Saturday night or Sunday night or Monday morning. And on Monday, uh, I actually have the day off from work. And, uh, if you've stayed long enough to hear the, watch the end of the video, I'll let you know that I'm picking up a machine on Monday, or at least I'm supposed to, uh, hopefully I'm not jinxing myself, right? Like you don't score until you score is what they say. Um, but this is a, a great deal on a game. I've been watching it for a while. You know, it was, you know, for the original asking price on Craigslist, it was kind of an okay deal, uh, but I've been watching it come down and down and down. And uh, yesterday the seller updated the price to the price that I probably would have offered as my opening sort of uh, uh, offer. And uh, so I texted him and I'm gonna drive over there on Monday on my day off and uh, pick up this game. Uh, you'll have to wait till that video to find out what it is. Uh, it is something a little bit different. It is something that I've, I've wanted for a while. It does have uh, some kind of, I guess, special significance to the channel. Um, something that I'm gonna enjoy, my kids are gonna enjoy. And uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. The monitor's not working. I've got my fingers crossed that it should be a relatively easy fix, uh, depending on what type of monitor it has. Uh, but it looks like in good condition and it's a great deal. So I'm gonna jump on that. And uh, the, the, the guy's house that I'm picking it up from uh, is actually pretty close to my office. So I'll be heading at least towards my office on my day off to uh, pick up this game. So yeah, and again, if you've, if you've lasted all the way to the end of this video, 
thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and if, you, if you've done that and you haven't subscribed yet, then you should probably subscribe to this channel, right? If you want to see the next episode uh, where we'll dial in this monitor, we'll work on some other stuff. Uh, maybe we'll start to test out the, uh, the PCB. Hopefully the, the wiring harness, the Repro wiring harness that I've ordered will come in soon. Uh, and we'll, we'll do that pickup video. We'll probably do that pickup video as the next one after this. So if you don't want to miss those, you should probably subscribe to this channel so you, you know, YouTube will tell you when I release new videos and you won't have to wait for me to post it on, you know, Clove or Facebook or Reddit or Twitter or, or somewhere. So uh, yeah, and for, for those of you that have subscribed, thank you, thanks for all the comments, thanks for all the likes. I love engaging with everybody. You know, if you ever have any questions or suggestions, you know, things that you notice I did wrong or could do better, please leave a comment. But uh, yeah, thank you for all of that. So, right, I think that'll do it for this episode of Overtime Arcade. As always, I'm Charlie. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! <laughs>